In this first video, I would like to demonstrate how to select the brush tool, the color you will paint with, and then review some common brush modification settings that you'll probably want to use when you start painting in Photoshop. Those adjustments include the size of the brush, the hardness or the softness of the edge of the brush, the texture or the type of brush that you're using, opacity, and the blending mode, which is very much like layer blending modes that we've already learned about, but these blending modes apply to every brush stroke that you apply to your workspace. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can jump over to Photoshop. I have created a new document. Mine happens to be five inches by five inches, but you can make yours whatever size you want. I would recommend making it have a colored background, white background, or, or some other color so you can see your brush strokes. And then I went ahead and I reset my workspace to the painting workspace. You can do that if you go to the window menu, choose workspace, and then painting. If you already have it selected, you may want to go ahead and hit reset painting, and that will snap all of your panels back into their default location. So in case you accidentally closed one or you moved it and you can't find it, everything will be back at default. Select the paintbrush. The paintbrush is the seventh tool down on the tools panel with the caveat that your Photoshop may have it in a slightly different location or you have the ability to customize your tools panel so you may have moved it into a different location. But when in doubt, if you can't find it, come down to the three dots here and then hit the flyout menu to see additional options that are available. Once you find, I selected a tool, let me deselect that. Once you select your paintbrush, Start painting on your workspace, click and drag, and you'll see that a brush is selected and there is a color. The color comes from your foreground color wherever you see foreground color options. I'm gonna double click on the foreground on the tools panel and change it. Maybe instead of green, I wanna paint with blue. And now immediately I will be painting with blue. All of the other settings that I wanna show you in this video can be found on the options bar across the top of your screen. Let's undo those brush strokes so we're back to a blank canvas. The first is the size or the diameter. So you can see right now uh, there's a circle on the screen and if I click and drag the brush stroke that I'm making fits within that circle. That's the size of my brush. One way to change the size is to use your right and left bracket keys. The left bracket key will make it smaller. The right bracket key will make it bigger. A second option is to use the brushes panel, which is open on your workspace. But if you hit this little flyout menu, the third option on the options bar, right now mine says 250, that's the diameter. The very first option you can select is the size of your brush. So you can make it a lot smaller, or you could make it a lot bigger. And you can, that one's so big that it's bigger than the screen. So let me undo that and make it a little bit smaller. You can make it bigger or smaller until it meets your needs. The second setting that you can select uh, on this flyout menu is the hardness. Notice how when I was painting, it was very, very blurry on the edges. That, because it, that is because it has 0% hardness. If I slide this and make it 100% hard, now it has a hard edge to my shape. You can also see that it has some other effects where it's creating lots of little circles instead of a straight line. We'll get to that in the next video. You can use any combination in between to get the look that you need for your painting project. There are a number of different ways to change the texture of your brush. And the first way is just to choose a different brush. And so whether you're on the brushes panel or this flyout menu, which is a copy of the brushes panel, you can click through the preset brushes and see how they may or, oh, I hit the wrong thing, hang on one second. They may or may not meet your needs. So this brush tapers and gets fat and, and smaller at the end. This one has a blur to it. I'll click through a few more of these. But one thing that you have to be careful with is that not all brushes are intended for painting. I've loaded some additional brushes, these dry media brushes here. And when I select on when I select them, some of them will allow me to paint like this one, but others I'll start painting and nothing happens. Let's see if I can find one of them. That one works. Let's try the wet media ones. I probably should have found one before I started. Now this one's interesting. Notice how this one, it's not painting blue. It's almost smudging the colors that are on the page. That's because this brush applies no color. This brush is a smudge brush. And if you look at your options bar, um, 
the tool that is selected is the smudge tool. If you look at your tools panel, the smudge tool, let me hover over till we get a little tool tip, the smudge tool is selected. And so if I paint with this brush, I'm just pushing the colors on the page around to create a different texture. If I was to select all and delete the content that's on that layer, I don't want to do that. I'll fill it in with white. Now when I use this brush, which is a smudge brush, it will appear that nothing is happening because the brush is not a brush, it's a smudge. It's a smudge tool. So be very careful when you're using the brushes panel or this flyout menu, which is just a copy of the brushes panel, that you're choosing a brush and then paying attention to what it does. If I select this Kyle's Impressionist Blender 1, I can see that it's still a smudge brush up here, so it's not going to apply any color. If I come back up to this tool, Kyle's Eraser Natural Edge, it's an eraser tool that has a texture to what you're erasing, and so you need to be careful. Now, Kyle's Ultimate Pastel Palooza, that's a brush, so I should expect it to apply color. Now let's go back to that one that said it's an eraser. When I use this one, it's going to erase, and it's making a hole through my page to my background color, which happens to be brown in this case. Okay. Some other things that you can affect. So let's grab a regular brush, one that when we select it has a brush icon. Um, you can affect the opacity of what you're painting, so it doesn't have to be 100% opaque. If you slide the opacity slider on your options bar and make it lower, you can paint with opacity. Now, right now it just looks like I'm painting with light blue, but if I was to paint over it, you can see how it is opaque and you can create different looks. So you could layer different colors on top of one another to create different effects, create different patterns and things like that. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to put the opacity back up to 100%. You can also adjust the blending mode. So we've learned about layer blending modes where you can have one layer blend with the layer below. But you can also have blending, mo blending modes on brushes. So right now I have that same blue brush selected, or it's green now, uh, and the mode is normal. This drop down menu is the same menu that we've seen on a layers panel. Let's click multiply and paint green over top of the blue. As we do this, you can see that instead of it being opaque, you can blend through to see the other color. Or if there were multiple layers, you would be able to see through to the next layer that you are painting on. Please open up a new Photoshop document, experiment with changing the brush size, hardness or softness, the texture or the type of brush, the opacity and the layer blending modes. When you're comfortable with those five things, you can move on to the next demo video.